Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ben and I'm a photographer and videographer based in North Wales. So a very quick one today. We are finally, I hope, going to put to rest the Fujifilm X100V filter issue. <laughs> so if you're new to the channel, back in August last year, I picked up the Fujifilm X100V, a camera I'd had my eye on for quite some time and the X100F before that as well. But it was my 30th birthday and as a wedding photographer in 2020, I'd had quite a rubbish year, so I treated myself. I've put all my Fujifilm videos in a separate playlist up here somewhere. So if you want to go back and have a look at those, please do so. So back when I first bought this camera, obviously I'd done my research and as many of you watching this video will know, it is weather sealed, except for the front lens mechanism, <laughs> which I think sort of defies the point really. So back then, when I first got the camera, I also picked up a Nissi filter, which is this one right here. So after doing my research, this one is what really stood out to me. It's a all in one solution. As you can see, there's a UV filter right on the front screws straight onto the front of the lens and it's weather sealed and unlike many other solutions out there you could also still fit on the original Fujifilm lens cap right over the top of it like so. So this is a fairly big deal for me. This camera is a lot of money and it's not as if you can just detach the lens if you dent it or scratch it or anything. It's the whole camera all in one that you're going to have to deal with. So for me, I'll usually keep my camera in a bag. Otherwise it's dangling by my side. I want some protection, mostly in the form of a lens cap. Now, generally speaking, this filter just stays in the pocket in my camera bag. It comes in a nice little case like that. Nice and sturdy. It's not getting damaged and I'll only ever crack this out if it's raining. The vast majority of the time, whether it's just shooting for myself or shooting for clients, I try and avoid filters wherever possible. Video, it's a different matter. ND filters are a necessity really, but shooting stills, I don't want to be adding any more layers of glass in front of my lens if I don't have to be. Now, in the comments of that Nissi filter video, a lot of people were talking about a Halga lens hood. So I thought I'd better buy one and check it out. So this one comes in two parts. We have an adapter ring, which screws onto the front of the actual lens. And then we have the hood component, which is blatantly ripped off from square hood, but it does the job. You can screw a filter onto the adapter ring and then the hood goes over the top and screws into position. Now, this is pretty good for a hood. Really, for me, it is just the hood that I'm interested in with this. Like I say, where possible, I don't want to be using the filter. But the downside of this hood is that the lens cap doesn't fit over the top of it, even though they say in their description that it does. So yeah, the hunt was still on. <laughs> Where's it gone? which finally brought me to this adapter ring again from Halga. This very simply is, it's a metal ring. There's nothing else to it. Not really much to say. So just like the one from the Halga hood set, it just screws on to the front of the lens like so. And then you can screw a filter onto it. Where's that gone now? So this will take a 49 mil filter such as this one. This is just an old Miranda skylight filter. It's of my mum's old Olympus SLR kit, but it will just screw straight into the front and voila, you have a supposedly weather sealed Fujifilm X100V and supposedly you can get the lens cap on. Uh, 
not quite. So as it turns out, this old Miranda 49mm skylight filter is a little bit too thick to actually get the lens cap on. So I was back online looking for a slim UV filter with a 49mm filter thread. And finally, I came across this one from Breakthrough Photography. If we compare these two filters, you can see there's not much in it at all. In fact, I'm doing a terrible job of demonstrating this. But this one is the Breakthrough filter, the slim one, and this one is the older filter. There's maybe one or two millimeter difference between them, but it makes all the difference. So with this 49 mil breakthrough slim UV filter, I can now screw that straight onto the front of the adapter ring, like so. And then I can get the lens cap and plonk it straight on top. And that is nice and solid, very snug fit, works perfectly. A couple of notes about the filter itself comes in a pretty nice little box. You feel like you're opening a new iPhone or something. It comes in a nice protective hard case. So again, just like the Missy, I can just keep it in my bag. It's not going anywhere. It's not getting damaged. And yeah, in terms of image quality, I've not noticed any sort of deterioration or anything like that. And on the edge of the filter itself, you may be able to see this pretty heavy knurling sparse but heavy knurling which makes it very very easy to get hold of and actually screw and unscrew and i'm quite surprised i've never seen one like it before really to be honest with you so yeah this whole thing started out because i was tight on budget at the time like i say 2020 for a wedding photographer was not a great year i did have the money from the camera it was partly from my own funds, it was partly from my parents' birthday present. But otherwise, in terms of accessories, I was on quite a budget. And for £30, the Nissi filter seemed perfect for me. Obviously now, I mean, luckily, business has picked up because I've been picking up all these other doodars and gadgets and everything. But I'm sure most people who can afford an X100V can probably afford one or two different options. So I do like the hood as a hood. This little kit cost me £38. For me, this is going to be staying in the camera bag without a filter, just the hood and adapter ring. So I can just plonk it on if it's a particularly sunny day, which doesn't happen that often here in Wales. And finally, the Haug adapter ring and the breakthrough filter cost me £20 in total. £8.99 for the ring and £11 for the filter. So if you really are on a budget, then I would strongly suggest using this ring and this filter. I'll leave links in the description down below, especially if you're like me and you really want to be able to use the original Fujifilm lens cap. As far as lens caps go, it's a terrific lens cap. I mean, compared to the standard plasticky squishy things which can fall off at any time this does the job perfectly it's padded on the inside which means it's a nice snug fit and i'm very glad i can still use it and obviously all of this is in comparison to the genuine fujifilm weather resistant kit for the x100v which would cost you 100 pound and with that you still can't get the original lens cap on what <laughs> So yeah, there we go. I think I've covered most options there. There are many, many more, these cheap Amazon brands and stuff like that. I'm not buying all of them. But again, for me, this is exactly how my X100V will be spending most of its time. As they intended it, bare naked lens, supreme image quality. But just in case it is raining or it is ridiculously sunny. I now have my very simple adapter ring and filter solution as well as a hood. 
and the Nissi, I'll still be keeping it around. If I know it's just going to be raining all day, I'll just slap this on. It suits the camera far better and there's no extra gaps between the filter and the adapter ring or anything like that. So if I know I'm going out and it's definitely raining, I'll just put this on. So there we go. Hopefully I've covered all bases there now. I'll leave links, like I said, to all the previous videos up here. And I'll leave links to all of these filter hood options in the description down below if you're interested. And yeah, otherwise, that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you found it entertaining, if not informative. If you want to see more future film content, please do click subscribe. I've got more on the way still, as well as the X100V. I do also shoot with the XS10. I will have a review come in of the 35mm f2. And let me know your thoughts as well. If you use any of these combinations at all, or if you use something else, drop a comment down below. I'll be sure to get that to you. But otherwise, that's it for me for this week. Thank you very much for watching again. And until the next one, be good, stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next video.